Hi, Aurora. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Miss Rhonda. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this message and vlog find you safe and in your home, maybe. Are you, are you broadcasting from your home today? Yes. Stay home and stay safe, everybody. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you. Please do that. All right. So I really was honored that you said yes and accepted the invitation to be on the road to recovery yes. because your insight has not only impacted thousands of businesses and yes. business owner, but me personally have, have been a client for, of yours for years. So thank yes. you for taking the time and the opportunity to share with us today. So Miss Aurora Day, how's Aurora Day Consulting? Aurora Day Consulting is magnanimous, okay? You already know that we help full-time revenue-generating entrepreneurs go from sole proprietor to CEO. And that's what you are, Miss Rhonda Jackson, a CEO. <laughs> Thank you. Honored to be in the club. I am honored yes. to be in the club. Yes. All right, but we've got some really great things to share with the audience today, and we thank all of you all for tuning in from all of your sheltered locations, and we appreciate you respecting all of our, all and contributing to all of our health and safety. So thank you all for being here and for doing that. So Aurora, if we were to start this discussion off with one word, one word, how are you feeling? Just give me one word. Amazing. Amazing. I like that. I like that. You don't know, you don't know how many people that helped today. Thank you, Aurora. Yes. <laughs> Hi, and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I have Miss Aurora Day with Aurora Day Consulting as we begin the road to recovery. Um, you guys have all been impacted in a variety of different ways with the economic crisis, the pandemic, our health, our bank accounts, and our lives are literally at stake here. And so what I've done is I've curated a collection of uh, experts, industry experts from all different backgrounds and different fields, everything that impacts our lives from health to wealth and wisdom. And our first guest is Miss Aurora Day of Aurora Day Consulting. Welcome, Miss Aurora. Thank you. I'm honored. This is so awesome. Miss Rhonda Jackson. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I think I wanted to kick off because you and I have had several conversations uh, prior to the inception of the road to recovery. And I guess I wanted to start with, you know, kind of calming everyone down. What would your advice today, today be for the, um, to, for the business owners at large? What would your advice be? Today, yes. what is the state of your business? So that's the first thing. Let's start assessing the state of our businesses are we good? Are we in the middle? Are we at the end of the road? Where are we in the business? And once we assess where we are in the business, that's going to help us make a decision as to where we need to go like right now. Because many of us are still in business. Many of us are still doing, still doing very, very well simply because of the market that we serve. And then there's a large group of us who are saying, okay, we're not going to be able to hold on because of the type of market that we serve okay so if the market that we serve are not working they're not spending any money okay so if no one's spending any money then what's going on with the business so today we all need to assess where we are in business oh, thank you for that so then i guess what comes to mind next is then how once we make that assessment do we shore up what we have so we're we're, we're where we are x marks the spot and then what, what does that road look like and how do we shore up along the way? So if we need to rescue our business, how are we rescuing our business? You and I have already discussed that we know we can't wait and depend on the government, okay? There are many businesses who have been approved that will be approved for the COVID-19 emergency funds, but there are more businesses that will not be approved. Why? Because they don't have employees. They are one person businesses or they are businesses that simply don't require them to have a payroll. Okay. So we know that that's going to X them out. So what's going to happen is once we see where we are, okay, now let's talk about the needs. So do we, do we need money? Mm -hmm. Where's the money coming from? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, love that. I love that. So then you're saying that we have options then. So yes. if government subsidies, grants, and things like that aren't our only options, um, is there, are there other places that we should look like within, will you describe, where else should we look for those opportunities? Okay. So for starters, 
whomever you are serving, is, is there a possibility that you can reach out to five people, 10 people and say, I'm having a fire sale. I've got these things going on. It, you know, how, how is it that you're offering these things to your clients? Are you emailing? Are you making a telephone call? What is it that you're doing? I was just recently talking to another client and I was sharing that I've been bombarded since day one, since this whole pandemic started. Every company that I am uh, involved with, I'm on their email list. I immediately got an email. They told me they understood what was going on. They were keeping up with the progress of the, of the pandemic. They told me that, hey, our physical doors are closing, but you can still do business with us online. As a matter of fact, you can just call and we'll have your stuff ready and you could just come pick it up. Or if you can't come pick it up, we will deliver it to you for free. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how are you involving your customers in what's going on with your business? That, that would be the question. Okay. So then what, what I heard you say is that we actually can still run our businesses from yeah. wherever our shelter in place or our shelter and stay location is safely, and then safely exchange that product with the customer, either curbside or offering the free delivery yes. or the, the pickup, the will call. Okay. So I get that. So then what would be the plan of action? All right. So I understand where I am in my business. Um, I do have a really valuable tip, you know, to go back to the well, to go back to my client base, but what would be a plan of action to see those steps all the way through for the next, I mean, for some of us here in Los Angeles, it's minimum another 30 days, right? And then mm -hmm. other places it may be longer and, and that tailwind, you know, it'll predict itself. So what would you say a plan of action would be for the, maybe the next 30, 60 or 90 days? 30, 60 or 90 days. Is your, let's be realistic, can your business make it another 30 days? Mm -hmm. If you say your business can make it another 30 days, that's one thing. Can your business really make it another 60 days? That's another thing. Can your business really make it another 90 days? So see, these are the blocks, all right? So if we're saying, yes, I can make it another 30 days, all right? Now, we're gonna start putting this thing in motion for 30 days. Now, you've tapped a well, there's nothing else coming. Is it possible that you have made enough in the 30 days to keep you open or to keep you financially secure for another 30 to 60 days? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So whatever's gonna happen, Rhonda, has to happen in the 30 days. The first. Yes. yes. I understand. I understand. Okay. So we've made it through the first 30, right? What's your, and I'm going to say prediction because I don't have a better word off the top of my head right now. What's your prediction for um, a business, the keys that will make sure that a business is successful. And the one thing that I really want to focus on as we, we pave this road to recovery is how as a business owner, not to end up in this position again. So what are things that I can do? Let's just say 90 days, everything's back to the new normal. What are things that I can do as a business owner when I do have access to my full client base, when I have, do have a more robust you know, sales opportunity with you know, my products or my services? What are things that I can do in preparation for the next pandemic or for the next you know, uh, scare, I guess? I'm going straight to insurance. I'm going straight to insurance because as you and I discussed previously, I had to assist a few clients in calling up their insurance companies. Now, we stayed on the line for quite a long period of time, okay, because a lot of people have had to call their insurance companies about their um, business interruption insurance, okay? Now, if you have a liability policy, you, you are going to have to make sure that you have business interruption insurance because this is the time that, that you should have been able to tap into that. So when we're talking about the 30, 60, 90 day, where were the wells that you already had set up that, okay, I'm gonna tap this, I'm gonna tap this, and I'm gonna tap that, and I'm going to weather the storm. So if you don't have those wells together, once you come out, like you're saying, okay, I'm getting this liability insurance policy that is going to give me the business interruption uh, services that I require in case of an event like this, which is an emergency, okay? Right. 
The second thing is I'm, I'm going to make sure that I have a home life insurance policy that I can borrow against, okay, which is tax free, all right, because I don't know how much of a cash injection I'm going to need to keep my business alive, meaning that I may need to pay myself, uh, you know what I'm saying? If I'm the key man, I may need to pay, my, pay myself so that I can keep my home together, okay? I may have some contractors that I'm working with and, and they did some work, now they need to be paid, okay? So remember, the life starts with you as the CEO. If you're not okay, no one underneath you is going to be okay. So you've got to be the one to make sure that you have these wells set up to tap in the event, which we hope it doesn't happen again, nothing like this, in the event that something happens to your business, period. Yes. No, thank you for that, Aurora. Those are beautiful, beautiful strategic plans. But if we were grassroots, we're tactical, we're in the thick of this. Some of us have already been you know, home 30 or 60 or away from our businesses, away from our loved ones for the past 30 to 60 days. Um, what is the last like parting piece of advice that you would give to business owners um, other than to hang in there and survive the best way that they know how, but what, what other advice would you give? Right now, you've got to love what you do. You've got to love what you do. You know why? Because you have got to sell, sell, sell. We already know you can't sit around. You can't sit around waiting. All right. You have to be in business. So what I would say to any business owner right now facing this pandemic, okay, and even if you're in a, if you were already in a space where you were going down before this thing happened, okay, what is it that you are directly selling to people? Because we know that the world loves speed, okay? So this can't be a thing where, oh, I'm going to order it and then you got to wait seven to eight days. Even Amazon is going to bring you something either that night, if you order it early enough in the day, they're going to bring it to you that night. Well, you're going to get it the next morning, okay? So what part of your business is, is actually what we would consider a direct sale, okay? So sell, sell, sell is what I would say. Okay, yeah, you called it a fire sale earlier at our yeah. talk, right? So it, you're it, saying it, 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 that inventory, get it out the door and into yes. some things. Yes. So, but that would also be considered bringing value to your client base as well. You know, yes. it's not just selling whatever, we're also bringing value to and meeting people where they are. I've seen businesses convert themselves into mask making facilities, distilleries, yes. become, you know, hand sanitizer producers. So yes. that would be part of that re retooling and the, um, the ingenuity that you would ask business owners to have at this time. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Miss Aurora. We appreciate you being with us today. This was absolutely wonderful. I think you kicked off the road to recovery and given us all not only hope, but just valuable, valuable pieces of advice that we can implement into our businesses, hopefully starting tomorrow. Pick out I that, love it. I love it. Up that Rolodex and call those clients, see what's going on. Yay. You, appreciate you. Thank you. You'll thank join you. us again. You will, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.